data results that show the impact that you have had on your students in your school, would you please send that information along to the advocacy committee? Now, why, why ask for that? Legislators oftentimes, some know very well about the work of school counselors, some though uh, need much more education about the work that we do. And so when those questions come up, being able to share those stories uh, of impact on students, being able to share data impact is not just rich, but it really does promote very strategically what FISC is attempting to do uh, for a proposed bill. So if you have any kind of information like that, I'm going to put in the chat box once I sign off that advocacy committee email address. And if you uh, would like for, you, for your school and name to be used, that's fine, but we would uh, certainly honor your um, confidentiality about that and just reference if we share these stories with legislators that this is an example of what goes on in a school, say in the northern part of the state or the southern part of the state. The important point is not where it's coming from, it's the impact on kids. And that's what we would emphasize. So um, again, if you have any type of data, impact stories, please share those. Uh, those will be uh, very much appreciated by the advocacy committee. And let's see, last but not least, we are uh, up to our elbows in doing a, a refresh on our website. Those of you who may have noticed, ASCA has also recently done one. So it wasn't that we were following in their shadows, but it's uh, just kind of ironic that we too have been in, in uh, work of doing a refresh for our website. And one of the, the points of our refresh is that we're working to have a member only section. And in that member only section will be some really uh, very, I think, helpful and effective types of resources that FISCA members can have access to. So with that, I will close out and say thank you very much again for being on this call. Jeannie, thank you for facilitating and organizing this. And don't forget, you're going to pat yourselves on the back at some point today for being a difference maker for kids. And if you're not a FISCA member, uh, I'd say, gosh, why not? You know, so we would welcome um, uh, more members to the association, which allows us to do even more to benefit school counselors, the profession, and ultimately kids around the state. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Becky. We're glad that you could join us this morning. Sure. Um, I see that my facilitator, uh, Kim Williams, is on the call now. So, Kim, welcome. We have asked people, if you have just joined us, to introduce themselves by putting in the chat your name, your county, and whether you're live or hybrid. So we, um, Kim, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Jeannie. How are you? Terrific. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Well, I know this is a different time for everyone because we usually meet from 12 to 1. For today only due to the inauguration, we're meeting from 10 to 11. So, uh, Kim, you want to go ahead and get us started with letting us know who's in the who's in the room today? Sure, Jeannie, I'm sorry. I um all right, so far we have myself, we have you, Jeannie, as our host, we have Annie Delgado, we have Carmen Lawson, Courtney Mills, um, I guess it's Tudor Toad, I'm not sure who that is, Jane Lee Barola, Michelle Vilwalk, MMH Alance, Raz, and I'll say R-A-S, Sonia O'Farrell, and Susan Griggs. I'm sorry, Futato. Thank you for that correction. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, just a few announcements before we move into our presentation today. The Professional Development Committee from the Florida School Counselor Association is presenting a webinar on January the 28th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, our speaker will be Mr. Rick Roach. He'll be talking about Sanford Harmony and Sanford Inspire. 
Also wanted to remind you that the Florida School Counselor Association Board of Directors will be having elections soon, and that application will be opening up in the next few weeks, so keep your eyes open for that. If you've ever served in a leadership position in, in your state, uh, your county association or have been an emerging leader or are interested in becoming more involved with the state association, we welcome for you to apply for one of our board of directors vacancies. We have four. In February, we will be presenting a webinar on achieving ramp. Our Florida School Counselor of the Year, Ms. Grace Wilhelm from Duval County will be presenting that. Um, I believe it's going to be February the 23rd. And then in March, we have um, Patty Swans Reiners, who was also a nominee for Florida School Counselor of the Year, who will be who is affiliated with com excuse me, computers, computing for counselors. She'll be doing a presentation in March. So at this time, if there's a webinar you would like to see or one that you'd like to present, if you'd please put your thoughts in the chat. Um, the Professional Development Committee is always looking to meet your needs and to present the kinds of things that are going to help you grow and develop as a professional. So if you wouldn't mind um, putting your thoughts in the chat, something that you would like to see us present in a webinar or a webinar you would be interested in presenting. All right, Ms. Kimberly, we're going to move into our temperature chat. Take it away, my dear. You're on mute. I'm sorry. Um, I thought I was just going to be reading the information from the chat that you were going to be facilitating. Um, not sure what the temperature check is. Did you hear me, Jeannie? Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, our other facilitator, Ms. Shante Norton, had five new students arrive today, and her administrator gave her the duty of giving some sort of entry test. So she can't join us. So, Ms. Kimberly, it's me and you. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the temperature check is, Ms. Jeannie. All right. It's just, at, you know, every day when we come into school, we have to have our temperature check. So we're just asking counselors, just kind of an emotional temperature check. Where are you right now with this new start to the school year, 2020, uh, new start to the year, 2021? How are you feeling? How are things going with your school? So an emotional temperature check. Um, I'm, uh, you want me to go first? Um, I mean, I'm at about, I'll say 90, 90%. What does that mean? Um, my, my temperature is at about 90. I'm, I'm doing good. I see that Raz, um, not Raz, um, but um, Futacho is saying that it's a typical day in the life of a counselor from, um, not sure where Futacho is from. Um, however, Miss um, Carmen just said that she has, she got a situation that she had to leave, um, but they're doing great in Seminole County. Um, I'm sorry, and Futato is from Seminole County as well. So they're doing great in Seminole County. Anyone Duval else? Duval County. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm Duval County and, and I misunderstood, but Duval County is doing well. I have to say personally, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I think the uh, 
responsibility of students who are doing online work and students that are face-to-face -face is making me feel rather splintered and I don't feel like I'm doing any one thing well. It feels like survival mode. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. What else do we have, Ms. Kim? We have MMH Alons. Um, it's saying that they're in a crossroad road. I'm sorry. They have over 300 students coming back um, soon to the brick and mortar. Students have poor attendance and grades online um, that are coming back. And she's from Dade County. Um, the virtual workload has increased from Futato uh, from Seminole County. Susan Griggs have said that um, the students are coming back wearing their mask and complying well, um, although they've seen an uptick of COVID cases, which has resulted in more contact tracing and in turn has led to more staff and student absences. Um, and of course, it's a little stressful with having um, to provide coverage. Where is that? That is in Dade County. I'm sorry. Um, Susan Griggs is Leon County. I'm sorry. She's from Leon County. Okay. Anyone else? How's it going? That's all we have for now that has responded. It looks like we have a wide variety of things from people who are doing great to people who are hanging on. And I think as, as things continue to change with students returning, I think we are gonna see an uptick. I think our workload is gonna increase and anything that, uh, that you're doing to help take care of yourself, I keep doing it because I think we're gonna need that. So let's move into celebrations, Ms. Kim. Um, let's talk about our SEL, our not necessarily SEL lessons that you're doing, but what do you want to celebrate that's happening in your school? Celebrate that's happening in my school. Um, I like the fact that um, I'm able to attend the classes or interact with the students on Fridays um, doing the lessons with them um, incorporating the character education um, with them and just in, enjoying that um, the talk and the conversations and the discussions with the students MMH Alliance um, says that um, the breathing techniques, the relaxation sessions are taking place in the classes from Dade County. I have to say here in Volusia County um, at my middle school, we are doing morning SEL uh, lessons in the classroom. Um, first period takes the first 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes longer. I guess it's kind of like a homeroom. And we have an SEL lesson they do four days a week. And we've really seen a positive impact with developing community and a reduction in our uh, referrals. So I'm really excited about that that teachers have bought into that and students have bought into that and we're seeing improvement due to those um, morning SEL sessions. Seminole County has said that they have only 62 active COVID cases within the last 10 days out of the 67,000 students. Um, Leon County, Susan Griggs says that the AP brought in stationary bikes and treadmills 
for staff for self care. Um, and he offered um, to one offer to put one in his office. I, I'm assuming is what they're trying to say as they start to get ready for testing. Um, and um, Futato from Seminole County is saying that um, there are only 10,000 employees um, out of the 62 active cases um, within the last 10 days, as opposed to the 67,000 students. That's something to celebrate. It is. So um, the person that wrote about the stationary bike, can we talk about that a little bit more? Susan Griggs, would you like to elaborate a little bit more? If you're speaking, Ms. Griggs, it, um, your mic is muted. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've been trying to focus on employee um, self-care a lot more this year. And so this was just one more thing. I think at first it started out as a joke to put in my office to get ready for testing. Um, and um, but so now it's in a location or several of them are in a location where all the staff can go and get a break and take care of themselves. Thank you, that's awesome. All right, any other celebrations before we move on to our best practices session? All right, let's move on to our best practices. If you wouldn't mind thinking about the things that you're doing in your school um, and how those things um, have impacted the students in your school, maybe you think that, I know there are programs that I've, I've done that I thought, eh, they're not really that special, but your idea may inspire someone else or it may be something that another counselor hasn't considered would be even doable in their school. So um, there's no particular theme here. Just what's a best practice that you do that you'd be willing to share with us? We'd love to hear what your best practices are. You can unmute or you can put it in the chat. best practices. What is something that you do that maybe you get excited about? Um, a program that you get good response from? What would you share today with your colleagues here on, on this uh, meeting with us? I will say best practices for me um, is to always remain cordial um, and respectful to everyone, not only to staff, but to students as well. Ms. Kim, do we have anything in the chat? Yes, we do. Um, 
MMH alums from Dade County um, indicated social media, Google Classroom Blast on a regular basis to increase communication and social emotional learning um, or to spread, excuse me. Um, also meeting with ESC students during homeroom regularly to touch base and provide coping skills and tools. Uh, Futato from Seminole County um, has mental health counselors and deputies officers in each school. It's wonderful to have a team approach, especially when evaluating a potential Baker Act, school counselor, mental health counselor, deputy officer. And again, that's from Futacho in um, Seminole County. Um, the person who talked about social media and Google Classroom Blast, can they elaborate on that a little bit, please? MMH Alliance. Yes, hi. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Ms. Benigno Lamps, uh, and I'm um, coming to you from Matter Academy in Hialeah Gardens, Florida. And... Uh, the social media and Google Classroom Blast. Um, social media, we have as a uh, team, as a department, we have a um, counselor corner, if you will. So we share uh, different um, uh, you know, acts of kindness. Um, we share uh, any information that we want to share with our students through, uh, through our social media. Um, Specifically, it's it's uh, Instagram that we have our posts that we share, and then also we have Google Classrooms that uh, we utilize to do the same thing to provide information to our students. Like I have, um, you know, a class of 2025 group and a class of 2026 group. So weekly, I'm sharing information with them about um, what's happening at school, uh, tutoring uh, information that's happening around the uh, the city. For them, um, and then also just you know boosts of morale, uh, not only for our students but also for faculty. Uh, so I, I do biweekly. I send um, something that will will that's positive and that's informative to raise morale within um, our faculty as well. Awesome, thank you. Um. Eunice Johnson, of course, um, has now joined the group who says that they have monthly eighth grade, a monthly eighth grade newsletter to students and parents um, that have increased the number of parents with email addresses, which allows for more teacher contact. Um, Futato from Seminole County also has a school counseling coordinator at their district office um, as a liaison with the superintendent. It's very helpful to have a voice in the district office and to also have information delivered to us from the district. Can, can they elaborate on that? How did they arrange that? Utato. If you don't mind sharing. She says she thinks someone at the district office arranged it and hired a former high school counselor. She is fabulous. Uh, Nicola Williams is her name. Um, hello, Nicola. this is this is actually Nicola Williams. Um, <laughs> thank you, Adele. Awesome. 
Um, and yes, oh basically God. when I our district got the Title IV um, and grant and part A, the they built in a coordinator for school counseling um, as a position as well as a district level school counselor um, to support um, professional development as well as um, providing that liaison between um, district levels, uh, decision making and things that were happening at the district level and the school counselors that are um, based at their different school sites. Very good. Congratulations, Nicola. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's playing. Exactly. All right. Do we have any other best practices? That's really awesome. Um, but other things that are happening around your school, around your state, I know things look different this year because of some of the things that we're not able to do uh, due to social distancing and, and trying to not be all up in each other's space like we have been with maybe programs we've done in the past. But what kinds of things are you still able to do or how have you modified some of the things that you did previously? Are you doing things on Teams or Zoom or Google Classroom? How are you meeting the needs of your students and your families? Um, what are some things that you've done in the past that you are continuing to do now? Um, what kind of leadership things are you doing for students in your school? Is anyone going to be uh, doing anything in particular for Random Acts of Kindness? Are you going to do the Random Acts of Kindness Day on February the 15th? Are you going to be uh, doing a Kindness Month? Uh, what kinds of things are you going to be planning for that? I didn't have anything planned, but I will plan something. I never even knew when it was, but thank you for the information. Sure. Well, one of the things that our school is going to do is um, our leadership team at the school has talked about doing something with random acts of kindness. And so in coordination with one of our coaches, um, the school counselors are going to be presenting the random acts of kindness and they didn't want to just do it for a week. They wanted to do it for a month. So some of the things we have planned um, each week, a first period teacher will get a calendar that has a whole list of things that students can do. And what we did, what we've done in the past is we've had students like get a calendar and then they initial it. And then you had like 14 people trying to hold the door open and you know that sort of thing. So what we decided to do was each week in the month they will draw from a jar, a bucket, whatever, um, one of the activities that's on the calendar and that will be their responsibility to um, do during that particular week. That action will be there. So if theirs is to write a note or if theirs is to hold the door, theirs is to say please or thank you or theirs is to help a friend, whatever, that will be their action for the week. And then the next week they'll get another, uh, they'll draw another one and they'll do that four times during the month of February. Um, also during our SEL time that we have during first period, students will have an opportunity to share at the end of the week how that action impacted them or what their success was or any uh, difficulties that they ran into. We're also going to be doing a poster contest that month um, and then the student posters will be up around the school for kindness. Um, we're going to do um, sidewalk chalk with positive messages and those are just a few of the things that we're going to do to really try and help with morale and just the whole climate of the school. So that's our random acts of kindness plan sort of in a nutshell. Um, anybody else do anything for that particular week or month that they'd be willing to share?
Do you have anything in the chat, Miss Kim? Um, M M uh, H Alons um, says they're getting ready for articulation, hoping to begin at the beginning of February, and they're hoping to plan kind activities for February 15th with the help of the Student Government Association and Activities Office. Um, and I guess Anna. Analvalo, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, the deputies were assigned in schools with a grant submitted by the county police. Um, so I guess they're um, they were assigned a grant that was submitted by the police that they're going to use. Um, to plan some activities um, at the schools. Now I know that there are lots of great things happening in your schools around the state and I would just love to hear what kinds of things you're doing. Um, but we're, we're not hearing a whole lot, just a few people have shared and I know that there are terrific things that you're doing and differences that you're making for students. So please feel free, don't feel like that anything is um, not significant or it's not a big deal because it may be just the activity or the idea that someone is looking for. They may not do it the same way you did. They may piggyback on that. They may adapt it for their school. So, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, please feel free to share. That's how we grow and learn. And that's why we, we do these, uh, these monthly lunch and learns. What else is happening? Mrs. MMH Alons um, is saying that they're participating in the Values Matter Miami Initiative, which is, um, I guess it addresses monthly core values to share and teach the students through lessons. And who uh, presents that? Can you share with us who presents those lessons, Mrs. Alonce? The counselors and the teachers, Mrs. Maddox. And what is um, that exactly, Values Matter Miami? Is that something that other schools could implement or what, is there a specific set of values that is a curriculum? What kinds of things can you share with us about that? It's an initiative through um, the Duval County Public Schools here in Duval County. And is it a certain number of lessons? Is it a certain um, type of curriculum? What is it that that's happening specifically? She says a, curric a curriculum is provided. It is um, in Dade County. Susan uh, Griggs from Leon County um, says that they have two social and emotional learning lessons a week in homeroom, as well as one student, one teacher, where the homeroom teachers meet to set and review goals.
um, I will share, although I'm not doing it right now, but um, I have utilized the second step curriculum, which is no longer um, a requirement, but I still like to use it um, if I can actually find it, um, a set of it. Um, I do like the Sanford Harmony curriculum, which is the last curriculum that I actually utilized um, when I was actually with students. Um, I like the, the discussions that do take place, um, the activities that are involved um, with the curriculum. It, it's a way to get the students to really get to know each other, um, especially those that don't normally interact with each other. It's a way to get them to open up um, because they may find that they and their peers may have something in common. MMH yeah. Alonza again from Bay County is um, saying that they're beginning a peer mediation tutoring program with their at-risk students. Um, it's piloting this second um, half semester. The alum students will be paired up with a, with, excuse me, at-risk eighth and 12th grade students to provide support. So the, the peer mentors are, are paired with at-risk students? That's what I'm, yes. Um, can we talk a little bit about the training and the materials that are used to train students, how students are trained, that sort of thing? Um, yes, hi. Um, so this is, this is brand new to us. Um, I'm the eighth grade counselor at, at our school, Matter Academy, and my colleague, Mr. Perez, the 12th grade counselor, we were asked by administration and our acting board, uh, we are a charter school. We, we use collegia.org as our platform to provide uh, basically, you know, we use Zoom, we use uh, we, through there, the students and parents and uh, faculty are able to locate their, their grade book, um, uh, email, all sorts of, of, of things that we can do on Collegia. And so through Collegia, and the help of our acting board, um, they're selecting alumni student who graduated from our school, who, who might be uh, at the moment, um, they're, they're probably studying education at a uh, post-secondary level. Uh, they will return to our school and utilizing Zoom, they will be paired up with a student uh, and provide means of support. Now, in terms of training, um, I don't know what that entails on their end. I just know that the counselors, Mr. Perez and I are basically going to be overseeing it once it begins. So we don't know the, the actual um, details of it yet. We did just nominate the students and got the consent from the parents to participate in this and uh, administration will be providing more information. So this is brand, brand new. So we're learning as we go. Awesome. Can you put the name of that resource in the chat? I'm, I'm not familiar with that and I wasn't sure how to spell it. Sure. Collegia.org. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else doing anything with uh, peer mediation or any kind of student leadership, um, peer counseling? Um, anything happening or planned for National School Counseling Week? Um, I meant to mention that when we were doing our announcements, but um, National School Counseling Week is coming up the first week in February. And um, it's an excellent time to advocate for our profession. We need to remember it's not a counselor appreciation week and it's an advocacy week. 
So often people that we work with, our faculty, our staff, and our administrators don't really understand our job or what it is that we do. This is an opportunity to really focus on our program and how we benefit students. So if you have any things planned for National School Counseling Week, if you'd be willing to share those as well, that would be terrific. Eunice Johnson says that they're going to do an art project at, um, I'm not sure what the CL stands for, but I'm quite sure it's a middle school um, where the students develop face masks with words of kindness or encouragement that are displayed around campus. So I'm thinking that might be a kindness project um, or it could be related to um, the counselor showing kindness to the students or students showing kindness to the counselors. I love that. That sounds like a really easy activity to do that um, that we could incorporate with our kindness week. Is this done on cloth mask? Is it done on uh, like a paper? mask? Uh, are you using real mask? Are you just using a template of a mask? Um, what's going to be happening with this? I love this activity. Yeah, Crystal Lake, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, it, it's their paper mask because we change them out regularly. Um, and one little girl wants to start to making masks and attempting to sell Crystal Lake Middle um, sell her mask to Crystal Lake Middle students or their parents. So it's being investigated to see if that's something she can do. She and her mom sew. But this is basically just an art project um, so that we continue to, to share the kindness, be kind to every kind message around campus every day. There's, you can't walk six feet without seeing a mask. Right, I love that, thank you. Um, Putato um, from Seminole County again says that Indian Trails Middle School has students in their pit crew, which is peer inclusion team, where the crew uh, is an elective that is designed to provide peer support for students with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Being a peer buddy provides a chance for students with and without disabilities to work together in inclusive educational settings. Additionally, being a pit crew team member encourages positive social interactions and social relationships to develop among students of all ability levels. How are these students selected and what does PIT stand for? PIT stands for a peer inclusion team. They are self-selected. Um, she said it is an elective that students may choose. An elective, that's really interesting. Talk a little bit more about that. Or teachers or parents can suggest. So, Putato, if you don't mind um, elaborating a little bit more on being able to choose as an elective. It's where the students help in the self-contained classroom. They accompany students with disabilities to general ed classes. They help in self-contained classroom. They help at lunch. Awesome. Thank you. It is for, she also says that it is for students with ID or ASD usually. Intellectual disabilities or Autism Spectrum Disorder. 
self-contained ID or ASD. All right, did we have anything else? Nobody mentioned anything about National School Counseling Week? Had anybody thought about that or was it one of those things that's kind of sneaking up on you? I know we're uh, closing out the end of our first semester and trying to make sure that all of our students are on track. Um, so there's not been a lot of thought about many things, but um, National School Counseling Week, Kindness Week, those are two things that are coming up that can be great tools for advocating for, for our profession. Anybody have any plans? If you're not familiar with the Ask a website, there are tons of free things on there that you can utilize during National School Counseling Week. There are proclamations that can be read at school board meetings. There are morning announcements that can be done each day. There are uh, small posters that can be downloaded that you can it's like a sentence completion. Um, the theme this year is all in. And there are things that you can complete and take photos of um, to post on Twitter. Um, so there are, are a number of things that, that you can do that ASK is providing. They also have some things that cost money, like bookmarks and stickers and pencils. But there are a number of free things. And then also this year, they're offering um, webinars uh, during the day that you can can watch uh, that deals specifically with advocacy and being a school counselor. So those are some great things. If you'll check out the American School Counselor Association website, you can get more information about that. Anything else, Ms. Kim, in the chat? Ms. Lyons has provided a link for some events for National School Counseling Week. That's awesome. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Um, and this uh, particular Lunch and Learn has been recorded. It will be placed on the Florida School Counselor Association YouTube channel along with the PowerPoint. So you will be able to reference any of the ideas that you heard today. So please be sure that you check that out as well. Well, let's move on now to, uh, it's time to wrap it up. We have about five minutes left. Um, what are some needs or concerns you have? This is a time where maybe we can talk about what we'd like to see in future webinars, if you would like, I mean, if, yeah, future webinars, but also in future lunch and learns. Would you like to have a guest speaker? Would you like to focus on a particular topic? Um, is there something happening in your school right now that you really would like some feedback on from your colleagues from around the state? So this is your chance to talk about the things that are on your mind today. Any future lunch and learn topics or speakers you would like to see? Um, any particular issues that have come up, maybe due to our hybrid models or our students who are virtual or, or anything like that?
Ms. Kim, what do we see in the chat? Um, a novel says brief focus modalities, training to create counseling groups and also individual therapy or individual counseling. Okay. I'm wondering if uh, anyone is experiencing, and I know this is right here at the last minute, but is anybody experiencing the same sort of difficulties with attendance uh, with students attending virtual classes? And have you found anything that works to engage those virtual students? Um, it seems like in middle school, parents say, oh, they're in middle school, they can handle it, and they're not really getting the level of supervision. And so I know we've had a number of our, our virtual students are not being successful, um, probably more than are being successful. So I'm wondering what you're seeing with that. All right, we see. Um, Futato says maybe we could discuss current trends, like the new, I guess, growth trend and rapid onset gender dysphoria, current trends in middle school. Annie Delgado says that she agrees Dr. Stone was wonderful and good ideas on how to impact the students. We just have a couple of minutes left. So just as a wrap up today, um, we just want to thank you all for joining us. Um, please make sure if you see colleagues that weren't on the call today that you remind them that we do this the third week of every month um, and we do it on Wednesday um, from 12 to 1. Today being an exception due to the inauguration. but. Um, we just really value your input. We value your experiences and your insight. Uh, I always get so many ideas when I attend these lunch and learns. There's, you know, no matter how long you've been a school counselor, there's always things that you can take away that you can say, hey, this might not work in my school, but it gave me an idea and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna move in this direction or resources are shared that people had no idea about and so um, putting those out there um, you know so that others can maybe incorporate those in their program so anything that you'd like to add today before we wrap this up Okay, well, it is 11 o'clock and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So thank you so much for attending today. Please be on the lookout for our January the 28th webinar uh, with Rick Roach talking about Sanford Harmony and Sanford Inspire. Be looking for our February um, webinar with Grace Wilhelm, our Florida School Counselor of the Year, is going to be talking about achieving ramp. And uh, then in March, we're going to be having Patty Swans Reiners from Escambia County talking about 
uh, computing for counselors. And uh, remember, National School Counseling Week is coming up the first week in February. So thank you all for attending today, and we'll see you online. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.